big week for AI, and it feels like every major company is trying to steal the spotlight. Google's quietly testing something huge called Gemini 3. OpenAI just dropped a study straight up ranking which jobs AI is most likely to take over, and out of nowhere, a new open source model called Ovi showed up. People are calling it the open source VO3 because it delivers similar quality, except it runs entirely offline. You feed it text and it spits out short talking clips with synced audio. So let's break it down. Let's start with Gemini 3 because this might be Google's biggest move all year. They've been quietly A-B testing it inside AI Studio, and developers already spotted a new label buried in the code. Gemini Beta 3.0 Pro. That means it's in full internal benchmarking mode and it's looking serious. You can't actually select it yet from the dropdown, but people have seen it listed in the back end under Starter Apps. The timing's no coincidence. It's expected to go public during Google's upcoming Gemini at Work event. That's probably when we'll finally see what the model can really do. Early testers are already saying Gemini 3 absolutely dominates advanced coding, especially on front-end work. In one test, it built a full SVG of a PlayStation 4 controller from scratch. Clean lines, no major errors. That's not just text reasoning anymore, that's spatial logic and visual precision. Compared head-to-head -head with Claude 4.5 Sonnet, Gemini was both faster and more accurate in SVG generation. Coding speeds up, visual reasoning's better, and it's showing major progress in multimodal tasks, meaning it understands both text and visuals together far more efficiently than before. Inside AI Studio, people also notice some subtle UI changes, like a new My Stuff section. It's basically a personal gallery where all your generated code, images, and snippets live. So yeah, Google's not just updating a model, they're building a whole workspace ecosystem around it. Gemini 3 itself actually comes in two versions, Pro and Flash. Pro handles complex reasoning, deeper analysis, and long tasks. Flash is tuned for speed, made for quick, responsive workflows. It's Google's way of covering both high-end developers and real-time applications. And then there are these mysterious new features popping up in the code, things labeled Deep Think and Agent Mode. Deep Think sounds like a built-in chain of thought system, letting the model run through multi-step reasoning without forgetting context. Agent Mode, though, takes it to another level. It gives Gemini Browser control. That means it can literally research or perform small actions online, like filling out forms or pulling real data, on its own. Basically, Google's version of OpenAI's Agent Kit or Microsoft's Copilot Actions. As for rollout plans, Google's sticking to its classic slow burn strategy. First, they'll hand early access to enterprise users through Vertex AI, then open it to developers between November and December, and finally roll it out to consumers early 2026. Expect it to show up first in Android 17, Google Search, Chrome, and Workspace. That's a staggered release meant to stress test everything before it hits the mainstream. If all goes according to plan, Gemini 3 could push Google passed 500 million active users by the end of the year, putting it head-to-head -head with OpenAI's GPT-5 and Musk's Grok 4. What's interesting now is that these models aren't just fighting over accuracy anymore. They're fighting over ecosystems. Google's weaving Gemini into every corner of its platform, Chrome, Pixel phones, workspace, while OpenAI is turning ChatGPT into a full platform with its apps SDK and agent kit. Now, while Google's doing that, something completely different is happening in open source. A developer just dropped Ovi, an independent text to video model based on WAN 2.25b, which is a diffusion based backbone. It can create five second videos at 24 frames per second in 720p, complete with synced speech. So you type a line of dialogue, the AI builds a character animates it, and makes it talk. It is the age of OV. I will never let that happen. It supports both text to video and image to video, so if you give it a static portrait, it can literally animate the person's face and lips to match your dialogue. It's all built on Comfy UI, the same open framework used by stable diffusion artists. You just install a new plugin called Comfy UI OV, and you're set. It runs either locally or on your own server. Setup's pretty simple if you're used to command line tools. You activate your virtual environment, open the custom nodes folder, clone the GitHub repo, then install dependencies with pip install minus r requirements.txt, restart comfy UI, drop in the model weights, the OV11 BBF16 tensor and MM audio files, and it's ready to roll. 
Once it's loaded, you'll see an OV engine loader node. You connect it to your model file, select a text encoder like UMT5 FP16, then link it all together. Attention selector, best one sage attention, latent decoder, and video generator. Type your prompt, hit generate, and it'll create a short talking video. If you're using image to video, load your image as the first frame, then type what you want it to say. For dialogue, you just wrap your text in brackets labeled S and E, like S, hey, welcome to the show E. That's how the AI knows what to speak. It then outputs a five second clip with perfectly synced audio and video. Frame rate's 24, rendering takes about two minutes for 50 sampling steps, and the final output comes with both sound and visuals baked in. Now there are still limits. You can't pick specific voices or clone them. It picks a random one each time. You can't match tone across clips and videos are locked at five seconds no longer. So if you chain multiple clips, your character might sound slightly different in each. It's early, but it's a big step. This is the first fully local model that can generate both video and audio in one pass. It's like a smaller open source version of Google's VO3, only it runs on your own setup. Artists are already testing it. One used Quinn Image Edit to design a recurring character, then applied Lightning Four Step Laura to build multiple clips of that same character doing different actions. They stitched everything together into one mini film, rough, but proof of concept. You can see where this is heading, AI native filmmaking. Meanwhile, OpenAI took a different turn this week. They went full meta. Their new study, measuring the performance of our models on real world tasks, basically measures how often AI beats humans at their jobs. The team used a framework called GDPVEL to compare AI and human workers across nine major United States industries. They measured quality and output speed side by side. The result? AI matched or outperformed humans in about 48% of all tests. Nearly half. Some roles got wiped. Retail clerks and cashiers lost to AI over 80% of the time. Sales managers and shipping clerks were close behind. Even editors, programmers, and private investigators Around 70 to 75% of the time, AI came out ahead. Even social workers, surprisingly, lost about half the trials, the jobs that held up, creative and leadership roles. Stuff where human judgment and emotion still matter. Film directors, journalists, and producers only lost in about one third of tests. So the edge isn't gone yet, but the line's getting thinner. Sam Altman spoke about this recently, and he didn't sugarcoat it. He said customer support jobs, phone calls, chat reps, are basically done. He expects AI to fully take over those soon. His longer-term prediction? Around 40% of all jobs could eventually be automated. That number isn't pulled from thin air. It's based on OpenAI's internal model data. He even went further, saying that AI could eventually replace the CEO role, including his own. In his interview with Axel Springer's Matthias Dopfner, he literally said he'd be enthusiastic the day an AI runs OpenAI better than he can. He sounded more fascinated than worried, which tells you how far ahead he's thinking. But not everyone's that bullish. IBM CEO Arvind Krishna said at SXW that AI won't replace people across the board. He disagreed with Anthropic's Dario Amade, who predicted that 90% of code could be written by AI within six months. Krishna said the number's closer to 20 to 30% tops. Sure, some repetitive tasks fit perfectly for AI, he said, but complex human judgment isn't going anywhere yet. Either way, the pattern's clear. This race isn't just about smarter chatbots anymore. It's about who can build the first fully autonomous ecosystem where AI handles everything, reasoning, action, and feedback without needing a human in the loop. That's where things stand. We're watching three fronts evolve at once. Google pushing next-gen multimodal AI, open source developers bringing video generation to local machines, and OpenAI tracking how fast humans are getting overtaken. It's wild to think where we'll be in six months. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.